Hey guys, John with Offering Homesteading. So, finally we've gotten a warm day here to start working on building the contraption, the, uh, the hot uh, wire cutter that I'm going to be using hopefully today, which we will get done today, to uh, start cutting the foam panels. So what I wanted to show you real quick is here's the nichrome wire that I ordered um, online. And it's basically um, nichrome 80 wire, 22 gram, it's uh, 50 feet of this. And I believe, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in there for what this wire is. But what I did is I basically just took a couple pieces of PVC, uh, measured them to the same length here, put a couple of T's on them, a couple of T's on this end. And then, uh, so this is, um, this, this is three quarter right here. And this is half inch right here. So what I did is I took um, I took some additional th three quarter, and I cut a small uh, little uh, collar or whatever little sleeve uh, that was about half an inch thick, and I went ahead and uh, just shoved that into the hole here, so that this half inch can actually slide up and down inside there with with very little play. Okay. And then what I did is I went ahead and put two screws on here, uh, measured this distance between uh, the line itself here down to the base here, and that was right at uh, about nine and a quarter inches. Okay, so what's going to happen is the cutting edge is going to be pretty much you know right right here, and then uh, what's going to happen is the the foam itself as I'm cutting is going to uh, lean against here and slide across this this area here and it's going to cut the cut the wire directly from here or cut the uh, foam from this wire at this point so on the ends what I did is I just stuck a uh, looked like it was a um, oh like a just a piece of metal uh, it's like one of those anchors for your tent that's what it looked like so anyway I just um, I went ahead and took that shoved it and bent it in so that it actually fit uh, down here a few inches into this uh, piece of um, PVC and then I screwed it in place so it would not swivel okay and I drilled a couple holes up here I had a couple ideas but the second idea uh, uh, did not work so what I did is I just went ahead and got um, the wire wrapped around the base here I don't know where my second uh, lock washer went but anyway uh, so I'm not using a lock washer on one side I am using a lock washer on that side has a lock washer, this side does not. So anyway, I'm just going to tighten this down and then when I'm, I'm going to bring my um, electrical wire and uh, uh, the, the electrical wire is actually going to screw in around this terminal here and this, this extra terminal up top. So it'll squeeze between there. I will probably uh, tie it, wire tie it uh, along the way here. And then I have a dimmer switch. Let me grab that real quick. I've got a dimmer switch that I'm going to put in line on a 110 volt circuit and uh, start it on low, see how well it cuts, and then I can raise the dimmer switch up. It's a 600 watt dimmer switch for like $10. And um, it's your standard one that you push in to start it and you turn it uh, for your light in your dining room or something like that. And that's basically it. So let me um, let me go find the other part, and then I'll show it to you. Hey guys. Okay, so dimmer switch here. I just I actually found I have an extra dimmer switch that is a switch style with the variable um, the variable piece right there, which was going to make it a lot easier to know whether or not this is pushed in and turned on or not. This one, at least I can know one is off, one is on, and then I can just set my uh, resistance in between to max uh, power or least power. So I'm gonna use that instead. Um, this happens to be, this one here is a Lutron 600 watt max, 500 watt one side removed. Okay, so 600 watts dimmer switch, just like that. Okay, then I'm going to use a just a box, which is probably a dollar, 
put these guys together here. I had only a dual switch uh, plate, so I cut that half so I can put that over the, the edge here like that. And then I found myself an old uh, Christmas light extension. Um, I'm going to need to cut off this end, but I won't cut it off right there because there's always a need for having uh, an extension plug like that at some point. So let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and get started working on this. The um, white and black are your hot and uh, positive and negative, and your green is always the ground in these types of scenario. So I'm going to need enough wire to go. Probably have it just come down one side, get out of my way. So I'm going to need. I will need. So much. I can make it so that I pull the wires right up this edge, but I've already shoved those through there, so I guess I'll just go ahead and um, just wire tie them to the edge of the contraption here. And looks like I'm going to need a blade. Yep. Let's go get me a blade real quick. Okay. Got myself a little razor blade. So. stripped. Now we don't need a ground wire, so ground wire can come right off. Gonna strip the ends here just a little bit to go around that nut. That was a good, uh, good strip on there because there's no filaments that are being left over. All right.
What's happening? Who's making noises? What's going on in there? So one side wire is done. I'll just connect the next side. Sounds like a banjo. All right. So now I need to go get me some wire ties and let's get this all tied up. In addition to that, I need to put the circuit in closer to the base. That way it's kind of on the ground out of my way. Okay, so this is the unit wired up at the top. Now I could I could plug it directly into the power and I'm sure that this thing would get uh, red hot and it would probably melt the wire, most likely. But what I'm going to do is down at the ground, at, from where this wire is going down to meet the ground, uh, that's where I'm gonna put my uh, control unit in, okay? So um, I could actually mount it a little bit off the side here and I could, or you know, put it somewhere where I could adjust it by hand. Um, that is actually a pretty good idea now that I'm thinking about it. Might be a good idea to put it somewhere uh, where I can use my finger and put some sort of a, um, an adjustment in it here. So let me, uh, let me look at that for a second to see. Okay, so what I think I'd like to do is mount this somehow on the side like so.
Okay, so let me show you what the final contraption looks like. So, there's your apparatus. Here's your control system. So dimmer switch on one side. Wired up to the top, you can see the little wire there. Comes down to here. Wire comes back over, it's kind of all wired tied together. Goes into the, the uh, switch, dimmer switch. Comes out of the dimmer switch, out the bottom. And I've got myself probably 10 feet spare so I can actually hook it up on the ground be working on my device and without having to let this go and go down to uh, without having to let this go and, and, and go down to the ground or to another control unit I can just simply turn the device up a little bit at a time right here and go right back to cutting or I can even do it from I could hold this here and increase or decrease as I feel I need to from here whilst adjusting this by hand. So I think that uh, is going to work pretty good. So let's uh, get with it. Try it out. Okay, so I just have to play with it a little bit and see how well it uh, will actually do through the the wider pieces. Looks like. Okay, broke the wire. Got too hot. Okay, so by. Turning this up to about 30% on the dial here. You see that? Just to about there. Um, it ended up making the wire red hot and it got a little bit looser and um, ended up pretty much just uh, breaking the wire. I don't know if you can see the wire or not there. But anyway, so someone else that I'd watched on uh, YouTube said go find yourself a portable um, you know one of those portable heaters that have that that heater wire thing in it so I just found I had an old heater wire just kind of a heater sitting here so I just kind of took it apart and that um, from what I understand is nichrome wire as well so there's two elements in here one on either side I ended up pulling out the other nichrome wire so this looks like it's a little bit more um, rigid Possibly, even though it looks kind of bouncy. I'm going to straighten it up, put it through there, and see if I can uh, maybe use that, and maybe that'll work a little bit better. So let's try that. Might be enough. Let's see. Keep going a little longer. So this gauge wire actually looks uh, thicker than the other one. A little bit thicker. 
Maybe it'll hold up better. Let's find out. Okay, so I've now attached the heater wire across here. And I decided decided to put the electric wire on the bottom here and then put the heater wire in the top because the heater wire is what's going to break and you can just unscrew the top uh, um, nut there and get that off easily. Now I did kind of squish it together so it might look like it's being pulled in but when the uh, when this wire gets a little bit hot it's going to um, loosen up a little bit. So there's the other side again. So again black wire down here that's tightened down and you got the heater wire above it. Okay, you want to see it try to test cut with the heater wire this time? Okay, well that seemed, I guess the thicker wire gauge uh, wire seems to work a little bit better for thicker materials, so let's uh, keep going. Okay, I'm going to move my contraption and everything down over where the big piece of foam is and see if, um, sorry, see if we can cut a uh, nine inch thick piece off here in just a second. Good. Was doing pretty good till it broke that wire too. Okay, this video has gone into the wee hours. We had our, our son Cole here, and uh, anyway, he just left a little while ago. But um, I tried uh, using the dimmer switch on there with the 110, and it kept burning through the wire. So I think there was too much voltage going through. There was actually melting the wire and just uh, cutting or falling apart right in the middle. So what I did is I took a um, I took one of those DC power supplies, a variable power supply that it goes up to like 10 amps, up to I think it goes up to 30 volt, 30 volts with up to 10 amps. And um, so anyway, I connected it directly to, I, I took out the dimmer switch circuit and um, took out the dimmer switch circuit, went directly to the wires and I was able to put in about, I think it was running at about uh, 20 volts, approximately 20 volts at about eight and a half amps. And it uh, got the wire to be nice and hot and it was able to slice through the pieces. So you can see, Right here, we've got a nice nine inch thick slab. Here's another one right there. And uh, move my light around here. So I got another 
nine inch, oops, move it over. So I've got another nine inch piece here, there, and there. So it worked out real good. Um, it was running a little bit slow, probably does a quarter inch or so per second. And um, I'm gonna try to see if I can find a rheostat, um, something that works on uh, 110, that I can control the voltage a little bit better, get more uh, juice into it, and it should cut a little bit faster for these longer, wider pieces. So, let's do the other way around, let's be in the same spot, just about. I can't see where I'm walking. Anyway, uh, that's it for tonight. And uh, anyway, John with Off Grid Homesteading. I will get this video posted so you can kind of get some update on that. When we get uh, some extra cash and I can mess with the rheostat, I'll uh, I'll go get a, I'll get a rheostat ordered. And then uh, for right now, I'll work with what I got. Slow, but it'll it'll work. So I'll go from there. Thanks again. Talk to you soon. Bye.